Since European colonists first arrived in the Americas, indigenous leaders have advocated for the survival and sovereignty of their communities. Wilma Mankiller was one such leader who dedicated her life to the Cherokee Nation and the expansion of indigenous rights. Wilma was a Cherokee woman born in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, the capital of the Cherokee Nation, in 1945. Wilma and her family moved to San Francisco when she was 11 years old. Through the Indian Relocation Act of 1956, the government paid for the move and job training for Wilma's parents. This act was an effort to Americanize indigenous people and weaken the political power of their communities. She called the journey her own little trail of tears. In 1969, indigenous activists occupied nearby Alcatraz Island to protest the government's treatment of indigenous people. Wilma wanted to join in person, but as a stay-at-home mother of two, she wasn't able, so she raised money to support the occupation. This event inspired Wilma to do more for her indigenous community. In the 1970s, she decided to move back to Oklahoma and eventually began working for the Cherokee Nation. She so impressed Chief Ross Swimmer that he asked her to run as his deputy chief, the first Cherokee woman ever to do so. Despite receiving hate mail and even death threats, they won. And when Ross stepped down two years later, Wilma was sworn in as the first female chief of the Cherokee Nation. As principal chief, Wilma led the 140,000-member Cherokee Nation and its $75 million budget. During her term, she doubled revenues and tripled membership, allowing her to open three new health centers and a center for drug abuse prevention. Wilma was re-elected two more times. Focusing on infrastructure and education, she created in-school Cherokee language programs to ensure children stayed connected to their culture. Wilma was chief for 10 years, and the impact she made on the Cherokee Nation lasts to this day. She remains an inspiration to those who still fight for indigenous rights and work to help indigenous communities. What traits do individual leaders need to build and support strong communities? <laughs>